It all comes. Try it. Distract them. So find you can come here. Come on. jumped in pretty fast so i'm a okay i'm gonna jump right into this you guys so um i'm gonna give you guys a couple of minutes i'm gonna see who else comes in if not you guys can just watch this on the playback hey georgia girl good evening honey good evening how, how was your day okay we got three people in here hey mama b I know. I don't think in the last live you was there, and actually you crossed my mind. <laughs> so I wanted to talk to you guys today. It's buffering. It is. Oh, that's crazy. Okay, cool. So let me let me just get started then. I don't want to waste any time. So um, whether you've been watching me for a while or you just subscribe thank you baby or whether you've been watching me for a while or you just subscribe to me whatever you know what i'm saying i think i've made it kind of clear um to a certain extent that you know having boundaries is extremely important you know as you're growing and ascending spiritually or whatever and so i'm going to talk to you guys today um, of the importance of having your own set of personal principles slash values or whatever. So, you know what I'm saying? Like I told you guys in the past, like I lack boundaries in all of my relationships before um, I woke up, before I became enlightened, right? Before I woke up, right? To the world and then woke up in all ways, right? Um, meaning I would do things that I didn't want to do. I would be, hi, hi, Miss Martin. How you doing? Thanks for joining me. Um, so um, I would do things, go places, be put myself in situations, put myself in and put myself in an environment, um, not follow my heart's true desire, all due to what other people wanted me to do. You know what I'm saying? That's just how I rolled, you guys. Um, I'm pretty sure some of you guys can. can um, that's good. Um, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys can relate to this, you know? And so um, as I started waking up, I started realizing um, how important it was to have your own self-love and your own set of self-values and principles. Meaning these are rules or laws, personal laws that you abide by. And it doesn't matter, you know, how other people feel about it. And if those people who are aware that you have certain principles and laws, whether they are aware or not, and they choose, good job, son, give me five, get all that, good job. Then they have to face a penalty for crossing those, for breaking those laws, basically, which you, you know, and it's very important. Now, you know intuitively, if you've been accepting behavior from people, accepting certain things that are not in line with how you, your higher self, you know, you pretty even if you're not completely awake, you know, you you're aware of these things, right? So, I, I feel like one of the first things you want to do is pretty much look at your life and look at your personal relationships, right? How have you been handled with people? And if there's a central theme, that's because you lack personal values, personal laws, personal principles, right? So, like I said, going back to what I was saying, and you guys can chime in or whatever here and there, but going back to what I was saying, you know, not having boundaries. And because I lacked self-love, y'all, I, keep it real now, I dealt with people that I would never consider dealing with right now. And that's not to say I look my nose down on nobody because I can deal with anybody. You know what I'm saying? I've had relationships in 
friendships and with people across the board. You know what I'm saying? So it's not that, and that's not how I was raised. My mom was a very, very, very open person with people. She was, you know what I'm saying? So I pretty much get that from her. So I definitely don't judge people. I don't discriminate. What I do is now I'm going to see how you are with me, how you treat me. And that will be the determining factor, whether you stay in my personal life or whether I have to dismiss you. And on top of that, when I dismiss people, I do it from a place of certainty. I don't do it from a place of emotion. Like I'm not trapped in my emotions. And then I say, you know what? I got to let this motherfucker go. I, I don't do that. I do it from a place of, is this person good for me? Is this person showing me a pattern that I'm comfortable with dealing with? You know what I'm saying? We all have things that we're dealing with, but everybody's not for everybody. I'm not for everybody. And that's okay. And at one point, and it wasn't even that long ago, you guys, I was in this place of getting offended, like when people wouldn't follow me or not fuck with me on social media. And I, even though I was aware of the fact that I'm not for everybody, because I was still trapped in my ego, I would still be offended if somebody would unfollow me or choose not to fool with me. And you know what I'm saying? Like I said, that's ego based or whatever. So that's an indication, like I told you guys in the past, that you want to do some roof shop or work or whatever. Um, but yeah, so following your principles, your values, um, your, your personal law is very important in this journey. I can't stress that enough, especially <clears throat> if you have a calling to be a light worker. Some of you guys are called to be light workers. I know the majority of the people who watch my videos, you guys are intuitives. You guys are empaths. Okay. So you guys are sensitive to people's, other people's emotions, other people's feelings and other environment and just environments in general right and a lot of times because you're empaths oh let, let me sit back a lot of times because you guys are empaths you take on other people's emotions and sometimes you're not you're not able to tell the difference between that person's shit and your shit <laughs> real shit so that's exactly why you need those personal brand those personal well personal boundaries personal laws and personal values because people will come around you yes people will come around you and try to feed off of your energy just because and listen just how twisted people are and i don't want to listen i don't definitely want to insult no people or whatever insult nobody but a lot of times people because everybody's on different like i did that video um uh, uh, like a week or two ago when i said that everybody's at a different place so you want to be be careful how you judge people or whatever and, and how you feel like, you know what I'm saying? But people will really know what you are. They'll know you a special type of breed and they will use that to their advantage. And then when you call them out on their shit, they'll find a way to twist that on you. That's why you got to have them personal boundaries because those are the type of people that you cannot deal with and or, or if you deal with them, it has to be limited interaction. You know what I'm saying? You can't have those type of people around you often. And listen, me, y'all, I will cut anybody off. If you're not good for me, I, I just don't care who you are. I will cut you off. And it's not from a place of ego or arrogance like, oh, yeah, I think I'm so much better than you. No, no, no. That's not even close to it. It's just that if you're not good for me, I can't do that. I've ascended too much. I've done too much work on myself to allow any and everybody to come in my energy and fester and feed off of me. I've done this work. And absolutely, you can do the same thing that I've done. It's just a matter of what's important to you. What are you, what are you value in your life? If you value your self-pride and your self-love and you, and you have those boundaries, then you know that you can't have any and everybody around you, guys. There was a time when I was younger... And I'm going to tell you, I would be around everybody. And then not knowing, like, in hindsight, thinking back that I would really feel drained or tired or I would come home questioning, thinking about how other people felt about me. Like, oh, I wonder why that person was treating me like this. Or was this person was acting funny. Or this person, uh, uh, you know, just, like, feeling some type of way. Because the whole time I was around people I wasn't supposed to be around. 
And a lot of these people were family. Yes, sir. What are you doing? Okay. A lot of the time that these people were family. And I would let these people, and I would come around people with the purest intentions of just, Matthew Jr., what are you doing? Matthew, let mommy redo what I'm doing here. Um, I would be, <laughs> I would really be in my bag. You know what I'm saying? And then I would tell myself, you know what, I'm not going to go around these people anymore. And then what I would end up doing, going right back around these people again. And I'm talking about people who I thought were friends. I had so many friends, acquaintances in my day from the time I was in school all the way up until like a, a couple of years ago when I started waking up. And people, honestly, when you wake up, when you really go through a spiritual awakening, you guys, excuse me, oh, excuse me. A lot of times you won't even have to cut people off. They will fall to the wayside. Spirit will naturally remove those people. Or it would just be like, you know, because I don't know if you guys ever saw that meme. I'm trying I'm to see how it goes. I'm trying to remember exactly word, verbatim how, what it says. But in a nutshell, it says a lot of times you lose friendships because they're trauma based. So when you start rising up and growing and changing, and ascending, you don't have you're because you're passing through you, you're healing through those trauma wounds, you're healing through those abuse wounds, you're healing through that pain. Those people that you were used to connect with, you guys have no connection no more because you have ascended past it. And so when you ascend, a lot of times these people are looking at you as if this motherfucker thinks she's too good, or she this or she that, and then envy sets in. You were speaking about <laughs> for real, Miss Martin. They start looking at you and then project it and then become envious and hateful, and they become to hate you. In the meanwhile, people like us, we're trying to raise you up with us. We're trying to get you on the path to where we are, even though let us keep it real, y'all. <laughs> this is something I had to learn as well. That's not all the time what our calling is, is to have people ascend with us. Now we'll give you the we'll give you the map, and you know I, me personally I don't like maps. I, I I don't I don't like them Thomas guys. I don't like maps. I ain't good at them. Thank God for GPS, okay? Because I'm not good at it. You know what I'm saying I, back in the day, my grandfather, um, him and my grandmother would take trips to Louisiana. We live in California, you know, and he would use this map, and I would look at that, and I remember feeling this. <laughs> I remember as a little girl like looking at that map, like, oh God, no. So yeah, I'm not good at maps, but I'm, I'm making a point though. But I'm saying like, we'll give you a map and you have to find the way to your your happy ending. You know what I'm saying? Or your happy life or your that, that divine spiritual peak. You see what I'm saying? But to save you, like, we've, like we're saving ourselves, you got to do the work. And you know what I'm saying? It ain't for everybody because this is not for the faint of heart. You know? So anyways, you guys, because, you know, I can go off on the tangent sometimes, but yeah, it all, it's all tied in together. But it's just, um, I just, it, 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 listen, having your own set of principles and values, I'll tell you where you can start, okay? Hold up. You can start by establishing some personal affirmations, Okay. And I've been telling you guys, I've been telling people on my Instagram, I've been telling people on my YouTube, right? Write a set of personal affirmations. I am abundant. I am successful. Um, I am prosperous. Um, I am a, whatever you, whatever you attain to be, that's what you put on those affirmations. I am physically healthy. I am spiritually healthy. I am mentally healthy. Hey, my son is six years old. Y'all know it was y'all in these videos. Him and my daughter, I wrote them their own set of affirmations. My son knows his by heart. He says them every day. You know what I'm saying? So it's very important. So anyways, when you're saying your affirmations, you know, get in the mirror and say them, right? The reason why I'm saying start with your affirmations because it feeds your subconscious mind, right? So when it's, you're basically what you're doing is you're reprogramming the way you think and the way you feel about yourself if you don't feel so good about yourself, right? So that's what the affirmations come from, right? You're empowering yourself. 
and the, and, and, and the energy of empowering yourself, boom, then you're able to lay down them personal values, those personal principles and those personal laws. I hope this is making sense to you guys, right? You're able to, you know what? This is who I am. I am abundant. I am successful. I am healthy. I am healed. You know, you, you, you're reciting these things to yourself daily. You're reprogramming yourself and you're able to walk it like you talk it. Okay? That's what you're able to do. And then in turn, you're able to show people through example of how to live that type of life that you live, right? You're able to establish boundaries comfortably. Listen, y'all, I've had people call me mean. I'm not mean. I'm not mean. Now, listen, let me tell you something. I've done a lot of work on myself. I balance my high and my low. That's my higher self and my lower self. So I am, I have done shadow work. So I am comfortable with my lower self, but I don't operate out of my lower self. The mo I operate out of my higher self. But let's just say that somebody come fucking with my kids, then I'm going to drop down to my lower self. I'm going to get you together and I'm going to come right back to my higher self. That's that God and devil energy. That's why a lot of times people say, and I don't want to offend nobody. If you're religious and these are your beliefs, I promise you I'm not in the business of offending anyone. But I'm just telling you guys, like when, when it comes to the, the God and the devil, that's the energy that you project. That's what you, we all have God in us. I know you guys have heard that before. We all have God. It's the, it's the energy of operating through God from you, from your divine energy, from your divine energy. You know what I'm saying? Power, your divine spirit. That's what it's about. So, um, like I was saying, going back to your affirmations, empowering yourself, and being able to operate in the energy of, you know, um, putting your personal principles. So, your personal law. So, let's say, for instance, you say, one of my personal principles is, I will stand by my convictions, right? I stand by my convictions, my personal convictions. So if you are the kind of person, because it's, it's, listen, one thing about this, another thing I just got to throw in there, you guys, is you guys cannot be concerned about what other people think about you. Okay? You can't. This is something you're going to have to pull yourself away from. You cannot give a hot shit what nobody thinks about you, right? So if your personal convictions is, say, for instance, that you um, had a drinking problem at one time in your life, Right? And then we're, we're going to start small and then we're going to build up, okay? We're going to start right here. So say you had a drinking problem at one time. Me, I used to be a very heavy drinker. And if you want to say borderline alcoholic, yes, I would, feel com I would be okay with saying borderline alcoholic. I don't drink at all now, okay? I didn't get any help externally with this, okay? Um, so let's just say I don't drink anymore. But... I can't be in the association or the physical company of anybody who drinks alcohol because that is something that is still probably dormant in me. Now, when you get to the place where you have really, truly healed this, then that's different. And you know that you could be around people chugging, lugging, and throwing them back, and they ain't going to bother you. But if you're just starting on this journey and you say, I can't be around you because you drink alcohol, that's what it is. That's your personal principle. That's you can stick to that. No matter what anybody thinks, no matter what anybody thinks, do not feel any type of way if somebody tells you something. No, nah, just have a drink. No, I can't drink. I cannot drink. I, I will not drink. Not that I can't drink, but I will not drink. That's something I'm sticking to. Okay. I'm going to tell you something. And, I, and I'm going to have to like structure my words a certain way because I have a six year old, right? So, um, I had somebody who I thought was a friend come to find out where she was the literally the opposite of what a friend is. She was a literal three headed snake. Okay. That's what the bitch was. And I ain't got no ill feelings towards her, but I'm just being real. I'm being blunt. Cause I'm a Leo. Right. So she was the epitome of what a three headed snake was. That's what she was. Right. Whole time. I thought she was a friend and she wasn't, but um, the beginning of last year, I was going through something, right? Um, I was going through something very, very heavy, okay? Um, and I've been through a, a bunch of stuff very heavy on this journey and in my life in general. But this is what's this, I got a lot of lessons and a lot of growth out of this period, right? 
So even though it was heavy, I got a lot of growth. So I just want to, I just want to give you guys a little something. So um, for a month, one month, because I'm not the type of person that can live with nobody. I have to live on my own. I'm an independent spirit. I'm a very free spirit. And I have to be in my control of my own environment, right? So for one month, uh, me and my two children, we had to live with my father, right? We went back and we went back to my, the family home, right? And so when I went back and we were living there, I, I, I linked up with a friend who, I mean, what a person who I thought the three-headed snake, who I thought was a friend, whatever. And um, <laughs> Lord have mercy. Whew. And anywho, at this particular time, I was on a dating app, right? And so because even in my lowest place, when I did love myself, I still love myself, if that makes sense. So as I was waking up, I, last year, I was already knee deep into this spiritual journey, right? So I was on this, this date nap, and I remember I was telling her about things, about how many guys were hitting me up, and this and this and that. You know, just talking, because this person actually was my, was somebody, this was my best friend, okay? So I was telling this person, like, you know, um, <laughs> you know, these guys are hitting me up. And this person, knowing how I am. If you know somebody for 30 years, you know how they are, right? I can know you for a little bit and know how you are, and I know what to say and know how to operate with you, right? This person knew me for three whole decades. And she basically, in so many motherfucking words, told me to basically sleep with these men, right? To, like, you know, sleep with them. And I'm thinking, like, I don't even think, I, I don't, sometimes, back then, things used to hit me after the fact. Now things hit me immediately, right? So I'm just like, no, nah, I'm good. I mean, she was a very, um, she was, she was, she did her own thing. Let's just say that. Right. So of course, you know, because she wasn't a friend, she was encouraging me to do something that I definitely wasn't going to do. And I definitely wasn't comfortable doing because waking up made me realize, now I'm not saying that I didn't do my thing before I woke up. I wasn't like Susie Homemaker. I wasn't like goody two shoes, goody two shoes type of, you know, woman. I did stuff. I lived. I lived my life. I wasn't a square. Okay, I did stuff. You know, I enjoyed the company of men. Let's just put it like that. Okay, but in the midst of her telling me this, she knew where I was, where I was in my life. Okay, and even in the midst of me enjoying my life at one point when I was younger. I never encourage nobody to sell themselves. You know what I'm saying? I never encourage somebody to put themselves out there, right? That was, it was a million red flags with this individual, right? But because I, I, I when I, when I deal with you, I gotta use it. Okay, just, it's all 40, I deal with you from a real place and I deal with you from a real place of love, right? I say all that to say this. What if I had taken her advice and said, you know what? Yeah, you're right. Let me go out here and just give myself away. When I knew at that time that being with somebody was a special experience, so I would have been sharing myself with all of these people at that particular time would that have been healthy for me. That wouldn't have been standing by my personal principles or my personal values. That's what I'm talking about, you guys. Not having people sway you into situations, into circumstances, into whatever it is, into environments that is not conducive to your life currently where you are. What you did in the past does not define you. Use those things as stepping stones and as lessons. They don't define you. They in no way, shape, or form define you. Stand by your convictions. My personal principle is I will not have my children around certain energies. Personal principles, example. These are just examples. I will always um, put forth the effort into expanding my consciousness. Personal principles. I will always put forth the effort to bring in, in to bring in the most prosperity and abundance through um, consistent work. I will, I will always stand by my ethics, meaning I will not do anything 
that will step outside of my integrity. These are personal principles, you guys. I will not invite anybody in my personal energy, whether it's my in my home, around me, that is not good for me. Let me tell you all something. Listen to your body. Your body will always tell you guys what's up when it comes to being around certain people. There are people who I've been around where my anxiety will kick in, right? And I remember sitting in a car with this person who I, I told you guys was a three-headed snake. And I was sitting in this person's car outside of my dad's house. And I, and I, the door was open. I had like my foot outside of her door, her car door. And, and I remember saying like, are you, are you anxiety? You have anxiety on you. Are you thinking about something? She was dealing with this guy. Are you, are you, do you have anxiety on you or whatever? Because I can feel anxiety. And it was my body talking to me, telling me that this motherfucker was not for me. Y'all. That's happened so many times to me. Where I, I, because I've been an intuitive since I've been here on this earth. I just didn't know it. But I would feel anxiety at times when I would be around people who weren't good for me. Who weren't good to my, who weren't good for my soul. You gotta establish those personal boundaries, you guys. You must establish those personal boundaries. I can't stress that enough. I can't stress it enough. Um, never let anyone knock you off your square when it comes to healing, when it comes to living when it comes to making a definite decision that you know is best for you. If you know intuitively that you're making a decision that is best for you, never. I don't give a fuck who it is, except for your children. Never let anybody question, or unless you are in a very healthy relationship and you know that this person is not toxic for you or is not, you know, then that's different. That's different. I'm not talking to those guys. I'm talking to people. You guys know who I'm talking about. You can think consciously in your mind right now. You know what I'm talking about. You know, you're thinking about at least one person in your life that you know fits the criteria of what I'm, what I'm saying of having to establish personal boundaries with. But these people that you have to establish boundaries with. You know. I had somebody not that long ago, somebody who I've been knowing. Um, how long have I known this person? I don't want to, I, she may be close to 10 years. No, I don't think it's, no, my son, definitely since before my son was born. So me, yeah, maybe close to 10 years. And um, and I'm just gonna give you guys an example and you guys may think it's it's something, I mean, but you know, it is what it is. So I'm just giving, this is just a very small example, right? Because this person, Prior to this, this person, I, I didn't have any negative exchanges with this person, right? Um, so I've been knowing this person and um, close to 10 years and I've and I, and not seen them very, very often, right? So intuitively, I knew this person was watching me on Instagram, right? I just knew. It was one time I went on live and this person kind of peeked in and it came out. See, on, on YouTube, people could come on your live and you don't know who it is. But on Instagram, you'll know when the person who, who's in your live, right? So this person kind of peeked in, and that told me that this person watches me. And I didn't think that this person at before this was really watching me because this person was um, this person was Christian, and um, there's a lot of religious people who don't watch me or have unfollowed me because of you know because of who I am, or who, who I've become. And so I was, you know, when this came to me that this person was watching, I was a little shocked. Anywho, long story short, y'all. Um, this person um, messaged, me, messaged me one day very briefly, right? And I'm the type of person who I like you to be clear with me. You can ask me for anything, but you have to be clear and direct with me. When you're coming, like when you, like when you, you, you're hemming and hawing, or you're saying things, you're ducking and doing all this. I don't, I don't have time for it. I, I just don't. I don't, right? So you can even come and ask me for anything. Like you can ask me for a question. It'd be like. You know, Indigo, I, I, I have this issue going on. <clears throat> my money's a little short. I'll discern for myself, should I do help you out free? That's cool. But when you're acting in a certain energy, when your your little your energy is a little off, 
then I, I don't I don't align with that. It's not that my ego says, er, it's just that I don't align with that type of energy. I'm a very direct person. So when this person came to me and it was like, this person took three or four days to ask me one question, which was they wanted to read. And I said, okay. And I gave them my price list for my readings. And this person said, oh, fam, I thought you would do the reading for me for free. I said, we're not family, so-and-so. Why would you assume that I would do it? Now, if you asked me from jump, said, this is the situation I'm going through. Could you do this for me? But when you're expecting, oh, yeah, let's talk about that. Expectation, hot damn. Okay. But when you're expecting something from me, oh, no, I can't roll with that. I can't, y'all. I can't roll with somebody who's expecting anything from me. I just can't. But when you're direct and you come to me and you ask me for something from a genuine place because I'm a genuine person and I'll be able to feel your energy, I'll fuck with you all day. But when you come from a conniving energy, like when you're trying to get over, because basically this person asked me a question. I said, what is it? This person asked me the next day. I responded back this person the next day. That's why I went into a four day conversation with only four sentences because this person knew the whole time that they wanted to ask me for a free reading. But they were on some funny shit. That right there, I blocked them. Boom. I hit that gavel, boom, and I blocked it. That's one of my personal principles. You cannot play with me. You can't play with me. I take this too serious. I do enjoy. I have I have a lighthearted side. But when it comes to my business, when it comes to my spirituality, when it comes to my healing, when it comes to me teaching, when it comes to me helping, when it comes to me healing, I don't take this shit lightly. I don't. I'm here to help. And I'm here to help people and all of that. And I will always be in your corner as long as you don't play me no games. As long as you don't be in no funny energy with me. As long as you don't be in no two-faced energy. <clears throat> as long as you don't be in no energy where I got to question you, I will cut you the fuck off. I will cut you off. That's my major personal principle. If you fuck with me and I see some shady energy from you or some here and there like you know, oh, I'm telling me you're going to do something and then you don't do it coming from that type of energy. And I won't even do it on the first time. If you say, oh, you know, I want I want to book a reading. Say, for instance, you say I want to book a reading. OK, cool. All right. I'm going to pay you the money. Boom, and then you don't do it. I'm not going to cut you off for that. Uh, uh Because I know things happen. But when you play games, when, you're, when, I, when I can feel that energy of you having some type of ulterior motive and I got to question that, <coughs> baby, no. Baby, no. I can't fool with you. I can't. I can't fool with you, y'all. I hope I helped you guys. I hope that this video has been helpful. I didn't I didn't used to stand in this power, you guys. This has taken a lot of healing, a lot of transforming, a lot of transmuting to get me to the place where I am. And that's why I stand so firm in who I am. And that's what I want you. I want you guys to be in this exact place where you stand firm in who you are, where you don't let anybody knock you off, convince you, talk you out. Because a real person who has your best interest at heart and no shade is not going to ever convince you to do something outside of who you truly are, your true essence. You got to be here. You got to be here. Self-love self love love self love self love you love you before them not your babies love you and your lover if your lover is okay that's different but love you before you love them you have to love you before you love anybody you can't you can how can you probably love somebody that's why a lot of times people be in relationships and we be expecting this knight in shining armor or this divine queen or whatever it is you know whether you're man or woman or you love men or you men and men and women whatever it is and you expect this person no baby don't ever put no expectations on nobody if a person shows you who you are believe in my angela period if a person shows you who you who they are you believe them take note take mental note 
even if they don't show you a major red flag, just take note. Store it up here. Store it up here, y'all. Just saying. Whew. So I hope this has been helpful, you guys. I'm going to come off, and then I'm going to come back on, and I'm going to do some free readings, okay? So if you guys have any questions, uh, I'm just going to kind of recharge for a second, and then I'm going to come back on, and I'm going to do some free readings, okay? But I'm only going to do them for one hour, and that's all. I love you guys. Love you, Mama B. Love you, Miss T. Martin. Love you, Georgia Girl Libra. And then I, I think there's one more person in here. So like I said, I'm getting ready to get off, and then I'm going to come back and do some free readings, okay? Peace. Love y'all.